Trump got booed at one of his latest rallies over his comments about soldiers and teachers. Watch. I don't think so. Empire. But they've never held a private sector job in their entire professional careers. He's insulting teachers and soldiers. Oh my gosh. Well, this isn't the first time he's insulted soldiers. Watch. In a conversation with senior staff members on the morning of the scheduled visit, Trump said, why should I go to the cemetery? It's filled with losers. In a separate conversation on the same trip, Trump referred to the more than 1,800 Marines who were lost uh, at Belly Woods as suckers for getting killed. John McCain who has been, you know, in my opinion, not so hot. And I supported him. I supported him for president. I raised a million dollars for him. It's a lot of money. I supported him. He lost. He let us down. But, you know, he lost. So I never liked him as much after that, because I don't like losers. (laughs) But, but Frank, Frank, let me get to it. He hit me. He's not a war hero. He's a war hero. He's a war hero. Five and a half years. He's a war hero because he was captured. I like people that weren't catching. This guy doesn't respect anybody. Who attacks teachers and soldiers? A megalomaniac, a sociopath, a nut job. By the way, this is how he plans to run education in America if he wins. I will shut down the Federal Department of Education and we will move everything back to the state. We'll keep approximately three people in Washington just to make sure that you're teaching English, okay, as opposed to another language. We'll end the leftist takeover of school discipline and juvenile justice. Many of these carjackers and criminals are 13, 14, and 15 years old. I will order the education and justice departments to overhaul federal standards on disciplining minors. So when troubled youth are out in control, they're out on the streets and they're going wild, we will stop it. The consequences are swift certain and strong, and they will know that. Can you imagine the Department of Justice evaluating the kind of punishment your children should receive at school? And don't even get me started on his plans for the military. Listen to this. Let me use these guys to guide our military a little bit. When you can win so many races, that's okay, you know? You you guide. Uh, Same thing with coaches. You take some of the greatest football coaches, you put them at a table. What do you like, coach? Because in its own way, it's not so much really different yeah he's saying he wants football coaches to be the generals for the military because they're good at running football games so he goes coach what do you think we should do he's gonna get so if he wins in the next uh presidency he's gonna have coaches as his cabinet Uh, maybe because of tommy tuberville that guy who's a senator now he thinks oh coaches our leaders, let's get coaches into uh, politics and government and we will listen to their advice on what we should do in foreign policy. Okay, okay, the guy is clearly out of his mind. Let's go with the military first. He does not respect the military. He famously avoided the draft by having bone spurs, quote, bone spurs uh, on his feet that kept him out of the uh, Vietnam War. And then on Howard Stern, he said that his personal Vietnam War was avoiding t- STDs in all of his single days and bachelor days and even married days in New York. So he sees the military and soldiers as suckers and losers. He said, he said that. He said uh, right there about John McCain, who was a war hero. He goes, I like my heroes that don't get captured. John McCain goes to Vietnam, gets captured, comes out, serves his country and this guy has the gall to insult John McCain. I mean, it's one thing if he said, listen, I don't agree with John McCain. I didn't like his politics. I didn't like the way he did. Fine, go after him on the issues, on his politics. But to throw in the military service, the guy does not care. He's oblivious to the fact that you should respect somebody who has sacrificed their life for this country. He famously insulted the uh, parents of uh, that, that soldier, the, uh, the uh, what was it, the Purple Heart soldier during the, uh, the, the 2016 election. He famously was in uh, France and said he didn't want to go to the gravesite of those soldiers uh, because it was raining, it was going to mess up his hair. He famously uh, told uh, John Kelly or one of the other, he told one of his other generals uh, when, they, when he met someone who had been injured in war, why do you bring these people here? He basically is a bad person who does not respect the service of the military. And let's face it, we have a lot of veterans that come uh, come back from war and need a lot of 
government assistance. They end up in bad situations. And those are not the billionaires that are rubbing shoulders with uh, Donald Trump. Those are the people that you might see uh, having trouble in the streets of our country. And we should be helping them. And we should be setting up uh, programs to help them. And yet Donald Trump probably looks down on them and thinks of them as losers. And that's just what he thinks of the military. So let's just start with that. So all these people that are like rah, rah, America, USA, USA, the guy that you are supporting is someone who uh, has zero respect for the military. At least the two vice presidential, presidential candidates, uh, Vance and uh, uh, um, Walsh, served in the military. Now, they were going after Walsh because they were making up a lie saying that Walsh um, left the military after his 24 years of service uh, uh, once his um, uh, troop had been sent to Iraq. The truth is he actually retired before his, 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 they, were, they were sent to go uh, into battle. And, uh, and he retired to go do service as uh, a politician for this country. And uh, so he's somebody, again, who sacrificed. Even J.D. Vance, I'm going to go out and say, hey, he at least served for this country. And Trump did not. And not only did he not serve for this country, he's constantly, constantly insulting uh, the military and members of the military and veterans. Now, that's that. Teachers, forget it. That's a whole other thing. The, the far right has gone after teachers saying that they are uh, grooming children, that they're brainwashing children. That it, it, and the reason all of this happened is because they want to privatize education. You saw earlier he wants to get rid of the Department of Education because this is being led by a far right movement to bring more um, religion into schools, more Christianity into schools, and more uh, uh, um, indoctrination. I come from a country, Iran, that's where I was born, where the children are taught uh, to memorize the Quran. They're, they're indoctrinated in a lot of the uh, Islamic ways. And when you mix religion and politics, you end up in a bad situation. But that's what the far right wants to do. That's what the religious right wants to do. And Donald Trump is bending over backwards to please them. And then he comes out and in public he says, oh, no, no, I don't want to be uh, associated with Project 2025. Well, a lot of the people that are in his team are members who helped write Project 2025. His own VP pick uh, wrote the foreword, I believe, to Project 2025. And Project 2025 is what lays out a lot of this stuff. These are very conservative people that want to get rid of the Department of Education. They want to privatize education. They want to minimize government. They want fewer regulations. They want to go after climate change. They want to say climate change isn't real. They just want to basically enrich themselves more and more. And uh, you got to open up your eyes. These people don't care about you. These people that go to their rallies, these people that go to Trump's rallies who are donating their hard-earned money to Trump to buy some mug with, with Trump's ugly face on it, I feel bad for these people because I'm going, you guys are suckers. This guy says, I'm a billionaire. I don't need your money. I don't need to run. I'm running for you. Biggest BS in the world. He's running so that he can avoid having to go to jail for all the crimes that he committed when he was president last time and when he left afterwards. And if he really is a billionaire, doesn't need your money, then why does he keep getting donations from you? Didn't Elon Musk just say he wants to give him $45 million a month? And Elon said, that's not what I said. All right, 10 million, whatever. Aren't these billionaires giving Trump enough money? Why do his uh, constituents need to donate to him. These poor people who basically, who, who, are learning, who are earning minimum wage, go to his rallies, give them, give him their money, and uh, he doesn't respect you. He doesn't respect you because you are someone who's part of the working class. You are someone who might have been a veteran. You're someone who might be a teacher. You're someone who might work in a factory. He does not respect you. He famously uh, was against the uh, union workers. Even in this interview he just did with Elon Musk, he made fun of people that wanted to unionize and the workers. He made fun of them and, and congratulated Elon on firing uh, workers at his factory that wanted to unionize. So you ask yourself, who do these people care for? Who are these people out for? And make your decision based off of that. They don't care about teachers. They don't care about soldiers. They don't care about a lot of 
the people in the middle class and the lower class who are trying to actually do better in America. And let's face it, under the Biden administration, they were able to actually implement some things that helped the middle class, lowering uh, some uh, drug costs, uh, implementing and passing the infrastructure bill that's going to create jobs in America, um, forgiving student debt that would help people get on their feet. These are all good things. And yet, the Republicans and the far right are against these things. Why? Because they're being uh, controlled and manipulated by billionaires who don't want to share any of their wealth. Vote accordingly, folks. Vote accordingly. I'm comedian Maz Yobrani. I've got a special on YouTube. It's called The Birds and the Bees. I want you to check it out. It's free. You're here anyway. Hit the button. Go check out The Birds and the Bees. And if you like it, give it a thumbs up. Tell your friends. If you don't like it, keep it to yourselves. Bye.